Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. So in today's video, I'm going to do a tutorial on this makeup look. This is the look that I wore in my lookbook last Friday and I got so many lovely comments from you guys. So thank you so much. I'm so glad you like the makeup and that you like the lookbook. So I think what you guys loved most was the eyeshadow and the lippy combo. And I think this is a great combo. I've actually been wearing this eyeshadow look quite a bit this summer. And every time I've worn it in a video, I always get requests on it. So the eyeshadow palette that I used for this look is the ColourPop Fame palette and this is an inexpensive palette. It's available at Ulta and it is just such a beautiful palette. I mean look at those colors. You can do warms, you can do cools, you can do a silvery kind of greenish look like I have going on today and I felt like the eyeshadow just looked so great with the colors that were in the lookbook. I had a lot of yellows in there and a lot of blues and so this eyeshadow just was perfect with it. And the rest of my makeup is all kind of holy grail makeup that I use all all the time and I gotta say this makeup lasted so well when I was filming the lookbook I started at like 8 in the morning I had my makeup on was ready to go and be like trying on outfits I took a break for lunch I went back I filmed more outfits took a break for dinner I was finally filming the like more up close talking part at 7 o'clock at night I finished that at around 8 so my makeup had been on for a full 12 hours and I was thinking like oh gosh when I watch this back the makeup's gonna be awful and just that so many of you guys wanted a tutorial on it I was like see this is why this makeup is just like the go-to for me because it's bulletproof you can wear for 12 hours and look at the end of the day just as good as you did at the beginning. Anyway, let's get into the tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. The first thing I'm going to use is Hello Fab Pores Be Gone Matte Primer. This is a new primer that I've discovered recently. I picked it up in the Sephora sale haul that I did a while ago, and I have been loving this since I got it. It's like a white primer, and I find it very like hydrating. Wait, I feel like I'm so far from the camera. I should come a little bit closer. Is that good? Can you see well enough there? All right. So anyway, yeah, so I just put this pretty much where I need some smoothing. And then the last place that I put primer is right at the inner corners below my eyes. I put it there to kind of help to moisturize my under eyes and to help to stick my under eye concealer in place and help it to look better longer, not crease. Uh, I have tried a couple of gripping primers for this and they generally are very drying, the gripping primers, but did you guys see? I just saw that IT Cosmetics is coming out with a gripping primer, and so I'm hoping that it won't be as drying as the other ones I've tried. All right, and then I also prime my eyelids at the same time. I'm using CoverGirl Lid Lockup, and I think that eyelid primer is gonna be one of your best friends if you have any problems with your eyeshadow not staying in place or creasing throughout the day. We've got all the primers on. Next up would be the foundation. So I'm using my Holy Grail foundation. That is the Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet. I wear the shade 30 Beige. I usually just take like five drops of this on the back of my hand. I had used my Clairsonic brush, and this is like the old school one, uh, but it's great to use as a foundation brush because the cleaning head pops off and you can get this replacement head for it, and this is a foundation brush, and it really applies foundation very well, especially something like this, the Chanel, which really does go on much, much better with the fingers than with a sponge because it is so lightweight and fluid. I find that a sponge just absorbs too much of it. I don't do a huge, you know, full coverage look with it. I think just enough to even out my skin tone so it still looks very natural is the look that I'm going for. Next is under eye concealer. I'm using Lancome Mackie Complet. This is their moisturizing concealer. This is in the color 310 Bisque. So I just take the doe foot, put a little bit on the back of my hand, and I have this little Sephora lip brush that I use, and I just pick up about a quarter of what's on the back of my hand, and I just put it at the inner corner and I try to use as little concealer as I can possibly get away with. The less makeup you cake on under there the better it's going to look, the less wrinkly it's going to get. And then I just always put a little bit extra right at the dark side of my eye bags which are <laughs> looking pretty big today. I actually got a good night's sleep last night but the night before, oh no, not a good night's sleep. <laughs> was up half the night having hot flashes and cat laying on me. It's like 
a 10 pound heated bowling ball, you know, and when you're menopausal and having hot flashes, the last thing you need is a cat laying on you, causing all this extra heat. And I always like to set the under eyes really quickly before it has a chance to crease. For that, I'm gonna be using Revlon Candid Powder, and this is in shade 001. This comes in a few different colors. So you just grab a little bit of that on a soft fluffy brush. I use the e.l.f. blush brush. Tap that off and just press it under the eyes. And that really smooths that whole area out where, see how you can see the bag much better on this eye where you have the luminosity. So don't put that away totally. We're gonna to use that again to um, just set the rest of the face, but first I'm going to go ahead and do the eyeshadow. And I'm going to be using my BH Cosmetics Crystal Quartz brush set. First I'm going to take the All Over Lid Shader, number 9 brush, and I'm going to go into the first shade in the palette right here in the upper left. And that is going to go all over the movable lid. I'm just going to bring that up above the crease a little bit and kind of unify the color of the whole eyelid and run a little bit of it right below my eyebrow. Have you guys tried those like vegan burgers that are supposed to taste just like beef? I bought a package of them at the grocery store last week and today I didn't have anything to eat for lunch and so I was like, ooh, that Beyond Burger's in there. I think I'll give that a try. So I just had my first Beyond Burger and I gotta say, it really does kind of taste like a hamburger and it was pretty darn good. You know when last time I ate a hamburger was? <laughs> All right, so next I'm going to go with the number seven brush in this shade right here. I'm going to start at the outer corner in the crease and just draw that at a straight line from there down to my eyelashes. If you have a really super hooded eye that lays on your eyelashes, you can just reach over and lift up your eyebrow to give yourself a nice smooth canvas to apply that to. And right here at the outer corner, I just like to make little circular motions. And then I bring it in following the line of my crease but not going below the crease. When you let that down, it's gonna fold back into place and the crease is gonna swallow up your eyeshadow. So you ready? Be sure to get that color up high enough. Putting that mid-tone matte is what's going to make that appear to recede. But these brushes are so nice, they kind of almost blend the color while applying it. And then you're just gonna repeat that on the other eye. All right, then I just wanna grab a little bit more of that same color using the same brush. And I just want to pack a little bit more color at the outer corner of my movable lid, just to bring that in about a third of the way with that color. And that's just gonna kind of be a base for some other shades that we're gonna put over it. All right, next I'm gonna use the number 10 pencil brush and this dark bluish greenish gray down here called Blase. I'm gonna just roll the brush in there. And now where this is a dark color, we don't want any fallout, so definitely tap your brush off. Follow that same line that we created from the crease down to the lashes. So I just put it way up in the crease and then just draw that down. So we're just gonna do that again, just to darken that up a little bit. So now we're gonna go back in with the number five blending brush and just using little circular motions, just blend that out right where it's sitting. You don't wanna move it around all over the place but you just wanna blend the edges of it so it doesn't look too harsh. Okay, now back to the Beyond Burger. The brand that I bought at the grocery store is called the Beyond Burger, but I think they're, they have them at Burger King now, and I think it's called Impossible Burger maybe or something like that. But I was talking to my daughter on the phone while I was making it. She was like, well, what's in it? So I look in the, at the ingredients and it's mainly like some kind of pea, extract stuff and then coconut oil. You know, like how coconut oil was really big a couple of years ago for everything, your hair, your face, and for eating. And then all these reports came out saying, no, don't eat coconut oil, it's not that good for you because it's like 90% saturated fat. So I was like, wait a minute, this is all coconut oil. Is it really that much better than eating an actual hamburger? So of course then, you know, I had to look it up. If you're not interested in Beyond Burgers, um, go ahead and skip ahead. This will just take a sec. But anyway, the Beyond Burger has 270 calories per four ounce patty with 20 grams of fat and 380 milligrams of sodium. And for four ounces of ground beef has 284 calories, so 14 calories more, 22.4 grams of fat, so virtually about the same amount of fat and only 75 
milligrams of sodium, so much, much less sodium per uh, ground beef patty than the Beyond Burger, and they both have about 20 grams of protein. So I was like, hmm, maybe it's not so fantastic. But um, anyway, I thought it was pretty interesting. So then I'm going to go in with my Sigma E56 lid shader and this beautiful shimmery gray green color called Privy. You know, just pick a little bit of that up on the brush, tap it off again, and then I'm just going to start right where I put that little wedge and bring this shimmer across about a third of the way. Just right to there, and I'm keeping that below the crease. All right, you guys, I was just like, oh gosh, I can't remember which color I used, but I think I used this guy here called Extravaganza. And I'm just gonna flip the brush over to the other side, pick some of that up, knock that off, and I'm gonna put that towards the inner corner. And then I go back to the blending brush to kind of blend those together, but I start at the darker color and bring it into the lighter color. And that was the eyeshadow from that video. So that is it for the Fame palette. So we can close that up. Next up, let's do the eyeliners. I use the Marc Jacobs highlighter in Irony for my upper waterline. So you basically just run that along at the edge of your lashes from the inner corner to the outer corner. Then I use the Marc Jacobs Gel Liner in In the Buff for the lower waterline, and that's a really nice sparkly, fleshy gold color, and that really brightens up the lower waterline. And then for above the lashes, I've really been getting away from liquid liner lately. I don't know, for the summer, it just seems kind of heavy. So the color I've been really liking for my upper lid is this Flower Beauty Vinyl Eyes in Bronzed Out. So it's a nice soft, creamy pencil, and I'm just going to line above my lashes with that. So I start about at the middle. I stop right about where I brought the eyeshadow in to create that little wing at the outer corner. And I'm also going to do a tiny bit of that at the outer corner, but not a ton, just a little bit. I'm just going to smudge that across with my finger. I do feel like I did wing it up a little bit more at the outer corner. I think I just kind of made a wedge out there. And just pulled that up with the angled brush. All right, for the mascara, I used Estee Lauder's Sumptuous Knockout because this is the one that I know I can put it on at 7 in the morning. And when I'm finished filming at 9 o'clock at night, I'm not going to find flakes all over my face. So I'm going to say, I feel like my eyelashes are a little sparser these days than they used to be because I've stopped using my eyelash growth serum. I know, I'm so sad. I'm still using it on my brows, but I stopped using it on my lashes because, you know, I have dry eye with my contacts because I wear them so much more than I should, and I had read that using those lash growth serums can really contribute to having dry eyes, and it really has made a difference not using it in how my eyes feel at the end of the day after wearing my contacts. I rarely do bottom lash mascara, but I feel like for a lookbook where I'm going to be standing so far back from the camera that sometimes it needs just that little extra. So let's go ahead with the eyebrows. I'm using Maybelline Tattoo Studio Gel Pomade, and this is in blonde. The BH Cosmetics brush kit has a brush for that too. So the number 12 brush is a very small, cute little angled brush. I try to make them look a little beefier here at the inner corner. So I start with my brush up and down and kind of mark that like that, and then drag it across to meet. I just love the bolder brows that are in right now. I hope we never go back to those tiny little overplucked brows from the 90s. One thing it doesn't have is a spoolie. So anyway, grab a spoolie and then just soften that up by pulling it through. Okay, just looking at the video, my brows are a little bit lighter, so I think I might have used the Urban Decay Brow Pomade instead, and this is in Taupe Trap. It's just a little bit warmer of a color than this. So anyway, sorry I used the wrong brow color today. So all right, let's finish up the face. What do we have left to do? I'm going to take the Revlon Candid again. I'm just going to set the fronts of my cheeks and up here. I feel like that's really what helps to make my pores disappear. I just take the tiniest little bit, and I just press it 
at the fronts of my cheeks. I mean, I'm all for a luminous look, but also I want to be selective about it. So I don't want it here because that I feel like just makes me look greasy. I never want my upper lip to be shiny for the bronzer and highlighter. This is the number one brush that I'm going to use for the bronzer. I have been loving the bronzer and the blush out of this Tarte Clay Play 2 palette. So I actually start the bronzer almost in my hairline just to make sure I don't get a big gloober of it too far out. And I love this color. There's something about the color of this bronzer. It's like not too orange. It's not too gray. It doesn't make me look like muddy. I just think it is just the perfect shade. And I want to get the rest off my brush so I can really blend that in well. Because you don't want to have any hard lines there on your jaw where people can tell what you're trying to do there. But you just want it to kind of chisel in that, you know, those little, little bumps where it sags down a little bit right there. You just want to chisel it in so you want to come a little bit higher on those. And then the number two brush from the BH Cosmetics kit I'm going to use for the blush. I should really do a tutorial with the eyeshadows from here. I think some people had asked for that as well. So when I pick up the blush, I never want to just go right in. I always just put a little bit of it on my wrist like this, just to make sure I've gotten like the bulk of it off there so I can have a nice subtle blush. And again, starting back at the hairline. And then I just kind of pounce it forward up to the apple of my cheek. And then I bring it down into the bronzer. All right, for the highlighter, I'm going to use the IT Cosmetics Radiance Fan Brush, number 116, and Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder in Highlight 01. So I just put that way at the top of my cheekbones with the fan brush, and I kind of angle it from up to down, and then I turn the brush and I pop some on the fronts of my cheeks. And I love that. It just gives me like the instant cheek filler over there. And for some reason, one highlight wasn't doing it for me that day, so I also went in with this Smashbox highlighter. This is from the Drawn In Decked Out palette. I don't know if they still have this. I'll have to check on it. But anyway, I think I went in with the more yellowy goldy one over here. Like, this isn't enough highlighter. I don't know. I was just feeling like it wasn't enough, so I just added a little bit of this over the top. And the whole time we've been doing this, I've been keeping my lips nice and hydrated with the um, Soap and Glory Sexy Mother Pucker Pillow Plump in Pinkwell. Uh, so that's been on there the whole time, but now that I'm going in for my lippy that's going to last, I take that off with a Q-tip. So this is my favorite lip liner. This is the Urban Decay 24-7 lip liner, and this one is in Naked. You know, it's funny, I've been watching some other YouTubers tutorials lately and the last two I watched the people put on their lip color first and then lined afterwards and I was like ah how can you do that like I just don't understand lining after like I just thought that was a little strange but what the heck have you guys tried it that way anybody anybody then the bottom coat I use the wet n wild liquid catsuit high shine lipstick in send nudes but the shade is just like, you know, very, very nude. So I wanted a little bit more of a pop of color over it. So I blotted that. And then I went in with the Physicians Formula, the Healthy Lip Velvet Finish Liquid Lipstick, Coral Minerals. So I love the color on this, but I find it is a little bit drying. And so that's why I thought to put it over the um, Wet n Wild one because that one is so hydrating. All right, and that is the finished look from the lookbook the other day. All right, you guys, so that's the tutorial for today. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, go ahead and give the video a like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. As always, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching and spending a little bit of time with me today. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.